Hi, welcome to our online worship service for Southside Baptist Church of Gaffney, South Carolina. I'm Walford Kaufman. I'm the pastor here. We'd love for you to come and visit us, uh, especially when things get straightened out. But we are thanking you for joining us today with this service. If you would, go ahead and turn in your scripture. Joshua, the fourth chapter, verses 19 through 25. Joshua 4, 19 through 25. This is a Memorial Day worship service uh, uh, sermon that I have. And so think about how honored we are to live in this place called the United States of America. From the Revolutionary War to Afghanistan, we've had young men and women, uh, and sometimes not so young men and women, who've gone off to fight for us. The, the fight for this land that we call the United States of America. There's those who did not come back. They paid the ultimate price that we can be free today. And so we want to uh, remember them. We want to honor them. You know, this idea of a Memorial Day started after the Civil War. But it is so strange when you start checking about this that it was not until 1971. That's not that that long ago. I know it seems long for some. It was not that long ago that it was finally made into a federal holiday to be on the last Monday of May. And so you think about this. Through the years, we've seemed to have forgotten what Memorial Day is all about. We've gotten busy. Oh, this is the official start of the summer, right? It's a time where we uh, have ball tournaments and, and going to the beach and, and the outings at the lake. We have forgotten what it means to honor these that have paid that price. But this year, it seemed like we're in the midst of another war, right? Of another war. It's a war against an unseen enemy called COVID-19. This unseen enemy has changed our nation probably more than anything else since World War II. Look what's happened to us. As we drive by these war memorials, as we think of the great memorials throughout our land honoring those who served our country, let us be reminded of the price that they paid that we can have freedom today. But a question I have for you this day, is it time for us to start, you know, dreaming about some new memorials? Is it time for us to begin planning for these new memorials to remind us that God is still in control? Not us. Is it time for us to go to battle with Satan? To be willing to lay down our lives that we can still have true freedom. Not just freedom in America, but freedom for eternity. To be willing to be inconvenienced. To be inconvenienced for God's glory. We need some fresh reminders of the freedom we have in Christ. Our freedom for this country depends upon what we do as believers in Jesus Christ. I know there's separation, you know, uh, of state and, and church. I understand those kind of guidelines. But we know who's in control and we know who God has used to bring us to this point in America. Willing to fight for goodness. When we fight for what God wants, I tell you what, our nation is blessed. Look at the history and look what's happening today when it doesn't happen. <laughs> we have seen what happens when believers have forgot to act like believers. We have forgot God's goodness and His mercy. We have forgot that God has called us to be a people of faithfulness. God has called us to be a people of obedience. The church... Believers, those who call themselves followers of Jesus Christ. What happened to us? When we have failed, we have seen this country, we have seen this country kill innocent little babies just because they're inconvenient. It's not the right time in our life. And we kill little babies. We have seen those who worship false gods, money, huh? Sports, all, I mean, just sex and all these things that have been lifted up as being the God, small g. 
But we've seen this happen. We have seen where believers can't not even bow their heads in a prayer time. Can you, can you believe that? You've seen the papers in a school district when they have been told that uh, as they are employee of that school district, if a student leads in the prayer, guess what? They're not even to bow their heads. Is it time for us to fight for freedom again? Is it time for us to fight for freedom again? Do I need to share any more? I don't believe so. Christians every day, every day should be a memorial day. We are not to forget the Lord. Deuteronomy 6.12 tells us, Be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out, up out of Egypt, out of a land of slavery. Do not forget the Lord. He brought you out of slavery. And folks, we need to be very careful today that we do not forget the Lord. We do not forget the Lord or we're going to be right back into slavery. And our scripture today, as you look there in Joshua, the fourth chapter, Joshua is setting up a memorial. What he did is they made their way over into the promised land as they had to go through the river Jordan. When it was dried up, God did it again. When he, he asked specific leaders... Uh, representatives from each one of the tribes to pick up a stone. And when they got on to the other side, they were going to make a memorial. This was going to be a refresher. A refresher. For see, this wasn't that first time that the people of Israel had crossed over a body of water or crossed through a body of water. Maybe you say under a body of water, but they crossed over. See, God had delivered the people they had out of, out of slavery and God used them and they got to that uh, Red Sea and they thought that was the end. But what did God do? He split the waters and he was able to lead them across to the other side. But what's happening, the group now that's crossing over the Jordan, they were not around. They were not around when they crossed the Dead Sea, the, excuse me, Red Sea, when they crossed the Red Sea. See, it was out of disobedience. It was only Joshua and Caleb. Think about it. Just two. Why those two? Well, those two were part of a group of spies, 12 of them, that were sent over to go into the promised land and check it out. They came back and Joshua and Caleb said, let's go do it. It's a, it's a promised land. It's a, man, it's a land of milk and honey. Let's go do it. The other ten said, oh, there's giants over there. We can't do it. And because the majority won out that time, sometimes the majority is not always right. But in this situation, you know, they kept the people of God who's already been promised this land from going over because of disobedience, not trusting God, not serving God. Guess what? Forty years in the wilderness. My understanding, a very short trip if they'd gone straight. But wandering in the desert for 40 years for disobedience. All the people had died except for the two. Can you imagine that? What was it like for them to finally cross over? For Joshua and Caleb, 40 years finally able to claim the promise that they could have taken 40 years earlier if they had just followed God's plan. So that's where we are today. Look at this, Joshua, the fourth chapter, and we're looking at verse 19. On the tenth day of the first month, the people went up from Jordan and camped at Gilgal, and, the, and on the eastern bor uh, border of Jericho. And Joshua set up at Gilgal the twelve stones they had taken out of the Jordan. He said to the Israelites, in the future, when your, your descendants ask their fathers, what do these stones mean? Tell them Israel crossed the Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until, until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan just what he had done to the Red Sea. And when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over, he did this so that the peoples of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful. And so that you might always fear the Lord your God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, 
Today, we need to be trusting you, just like Joshua and Caleb did. Lord, you've got something great for us. You've got something uh, that's going to bless us, but we have to be obedient and trust you. Lord, forgive us as believers. Forgive us as a nation where we have stopped trusting you. We've started living for the world instead of following your plan. Today, convict us, teach us, and then let us go and walk that path that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So we see here some key things that Joshua is trying to tell the folks. It's not just, hey, this is where we crossed the Jordan River. Oh, this is remind us also where we crossed over on the Red Sea. It is also to let us be reminded that we are always to please God. We're always to please God. We've come to realize recently, haven't we? It's not big church buildings. It's not fancy programs. It's not us going through the motion of worship. It's God that wants us to have complete dependence on Him. It's called obedience. Following the Lord. See, millions of Israelites died in that 40 years. How many funerals did Caleb and Joshua had to go to during those 40 years? Everybody they knew died during that time, all because they did not please God. And so there they are finally. So that's what we need to be reminded of. As Americans today, as Americans today, and most of all as a believer in Jesus Christ, we need to make sure that we always please God with everything that we do. And then the next thing is always pursue God. Always pursue God. See, when we're once free of this COVID-19, I'll be honest with you, I've been thinking this. Once we're through with this COVID-19, I just wonder, will our churches truly be filled? Filled. And I know it's going to take, we're probably going to have to have a, a vaccine. We're probably going to have to medicine for it. We're going to have to be uh, the, the 100, 100, and 100%. Okay, get back in church. It's okay to do it. Well, we'll be filled. Or instead, will our churches be empty because people are at the ballparks. They're at the lakes. They're up in the mountains. They're down at the beach and all this. We need to make sure that even when this is over with, that we are pursuing God. I heard a story about two men that was trying to find a new place to go hunting. So they went out in the countryside and they came across this old dirt road and went down it and they found this old house that looked like it was almost abandoned, except for there were some animals, some chickens and a goat out in the yard and all. So they got out, they were walking up and they saw an old, old well. They hadn't seen one of those in so long. They walked over and they looked down in that well. They hollered and they said, I just wonder how deep is that well? And so they threw a penny or two down and they couldn't hear a thing. And they looked over and they saw a, a nice sized log in all this. And they said, well, if we drop that down in there, we're bound to hear something. And so they went over there and they got that log and they carried it over and they dropped it in that well. Well, they waited and they waited and still didn't hear anything. But they turned around to walk away. And here comes a goat at them as fast as he could. I mean, it's like he's going to charge right into them. But they stepped aside and that goat went right by them and went over in, into that well and dropped. It's gone. They didn't know what was happening. Their heart's still beating because they had goat about wiped them out. And so as they're making their way back to their truck, the farmer comes around the barn, said, what you guys want? And uh, said, we're looking for a place to hunt and all. And uh, he said, oh, that's OK. If you want to go ahead and hunt now. But the guy said, uh, sir, you've got an old goat here that almost, almost killed us. And he said, almost killed you. What do you mean? He said, you know, he come running at us and I, as, as fast as he could. If we hadn't stepped to the side, he would have knocked us down. And the farmer said, I don't know how that could have been because I had him tied to that old log. I hope you get that. It's hard telling a joke to a camera. 
like this. But what it meant with that story is, what are you tied to? What are you hooked up to? Is it the ways of the world? Is it your wants? Is it your desires? Or are you tied up to the ways of God? Are you pursuing God with everything that's a part of you? So always pursue Him. Uh, I understand Alice Cooper, and I, when I, I throw out a celebrity's name, I'm not putting my stamp of approval because humans are humans. They're going to make mistakes, even celebrities. But you know, Alice Cooper, that man, he's the old rock and roller and all, but from the days, uh, you know, that school's uh, out for the summer and all this, and now we, hopefully it's just out for the summer. So you think about this. But I understand that he was sharing his testimony. And he was sharing that with all the lifestyle that he's, but he's had, and he's done everything, that now as a believer in Jesus Christ, he's a rebel. He's a rebel. And I thought about that. And the truth is, we need to be rebellious for God. Rebellious for God. You say, well, what, you mean you're running from God? No, I, you need to be rebellious from the things of this world. You need to be a rebel of what the world is telling you to do. What I want, our desires, ah, rebel against those and trust in the one. Trust in the one that's going to take care of us today and tomorrow. And then always fear God. That's what Joshua is trying to tell us with that memorial he set up with those 12 stones. Always fear God. Now, I'm not talking about that fear of being scared. You know, an abusive situation where someone is always hurting you. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about that fear of admiration, that fear of love and passion. Do you remember as a child holding your father's hand as you walked through a crowd? Maybe it was at the, the local fair or some big event that you had been to. And there's a lot of people, maybe at a ball game or something like that. And you're going through the crowd and you're holding your father's hand. But you've gotten a little bit older. And you think you can take care of yourself. So you pull your hand away from your father. Well, when you do, he kind of looks down at you. But you're, you know, you're confident you can take care of yourself. So he says, okay, but you better stay close. Now he gave you freedom. He gave you freedom to let go of his hand. But you, you know, you know you're not going to take that hand back. So he says, but stay close. But you start journeying and you keep an eye on your father. But something catches your attention. You look over and there's some candy apples over there. Maybe there's a friend over there. Whatever it may be. But then you look at your friend and you look at your father. You looked at the candy apple and you looked at your father. And then you look at the candy apple and then you, then you look back at the candy apple. And next thing you know, you've taken your eyes off of your father and you've been concentrating on this other thing that it's going to get you in trouble because next thing you know, you can't see your dad. You can't see. You're lost. You're scared. There's fear in your life. What happened? You took your eyes off your father. I got a question for you. Where's our nation today? Where's our nation today? Have we taken our eyes off of our heavenly father? Yes, we have. He gave us freedom. He even gives us freedom spiritually. And sometimes we can say, I can do it myself. But if we don't put our hands back into the hand of God and let this wonderful, loving, heavenly Father direct us, we're going to be in a lot of trouble. See, do we need to fear losing God? God never gets lost. God's plan is perfect. What happens is we're the ones that pay the price. We're the, we're the ones paying the price now for being lost. Because we took our eyes off the Father. But isn't it great to know? Isn't it great to know that our Father never takes His eyes off of us? How many of you have been scared? You've lost your, your earthly father and He walked on and, and all. and see, But He turned around. You couldn't see him, but he could see you. 
You remember what it felt like as you stood there all alone? Maybe you'd even started crying. You're wondering what in the world is going to happen and all this. And through those tears, you look up and here comes your father. And what does he do? He picks you up and he puts you on the shoulder, his shoulder and he walks away. Oh man, what a wonderful feeling. What a wonderful feeling to know that your father came back and got you. Think about it. Is it time for our Father to come back and take our nation back? Is it time for our Father to come and take us back spiritually? Now, I pray for our nation. I want our nation to be truly free in Christ. But even if our nation falls, He can take care of us individually. That's the wonderful thing. It's our choice. And I pray today that you've cried out. I pray that you have, our nation needs to cry out, help. Help, not a stimulus package, not new government leaders. Our help is from God and God only. That's what J- Josh was doing there. You're, you, it said, you will always fear the Lord your God. For the Lord, says there, is powerful. The Lord is powerful in that day. The Lord is powerful today. And the Lord is powerful tomorrow. And He is powerful to change your life today. All you got to do is cry out help. Will you bow your heads right there? And would you pray this simple prayer? Our Heavenly Father, thank You for Your love. Thank You for never taking Your eyes off of me. I need Your help. I need You to take complete control of my life. Yes, pick me up and carry me. I can't do it. I need You, Father. Thank You. Thank You for being my Father. In Jesus' name, Amen. If you prayed a prayer like that, or maybe need to pray another prayer, and need to let a preacher know, please feel free to call me. My cell phone number is 864-812-0073, or you can contact me at email, uh, that is pastor at gaffneysouthside.com pastor at gaffneysouthside.com love to hear of what's happened in your life and let's pray for our nation in this memorial day let's remember all those who paid the price for our freedom in america but let's be reminded who paid the price for our freedom for eternity on the cross his name is jesus may god bless you and may god use you this week